College sports is a multi-billion dollar industry. The players are talented, driven, and focused on success. Coaches are treated like celebrities. In short, college athletics are no longer amateur. Hi, I'm Jenna Robinson, and this is A Higher Education Moment, a video series presented by the James G. Martin Center for Academic Renewal. It's the first in a series about college athletics. For years, we have called the players who take part in college athletics student athletes, but these days there's very little emphasis on the student part, especially in Division I basketball and football. Graduation rates are low, the number of one and dones is on the rise, and even mid-tier teams give promising athletes waivers so they don't have to meet the school's minimum admissions requirements. The six-year federal graduation rate for Division I men's basketball players was only 46% in 2018. By comparison, the rate for all students is 66%. In Division I baseball, it's 52%. For black football players, it's 58%. This is evidence that athletics matter more than academics to these students and their coaches. One of the reasons for the poor graduation rate is the NBA's rule adopted in 2005 that all players must be at least 19 years old during the calendar year of the NBA draft. For practical purposes, this means that talented basketball players go to college in order to play just until they turn 19. They only have to maintain academic eligibility for one semester. In the spring, there's no need to even attend classes since they know they'll be headed to the NBA draft instead of sophomore year. Over the past 10 years, the University of Kentucky has had 25 players who played for just one year before going to the NBA. Other schools with large numbers of one and done players include Duke with 10, Kansas with 8, UCLA with 7, and Texas with 6. The NBA broke its record for the most freshmen selected in the first round of the draft in 2017, taking 14 one-and-done players. In order to recruit these top players, schools often bend their own rules. In 2016, 4.3% of UNC system athletes received academic waivers. The minimum admissions requirement for all UNC institutions is already low, an 880 combined SAT score and a 2.5 cumulative GPA. That means that the 54 student athletes who received waivers scored below the minimum requirements, which aren't very rigorous in the first place. But lack of preparation for college work isn't the only reason athletes fail to graduate. They also have to cope with unreasonable travel and practice demands. In the 2017-18 season, the Duke men's basketball team played 15 away games, 12 of which were outside North Carolina. They also played in three out-of-state tournaments in Oregon, Brooklyn, and San Antonio. And practice takes up more time than games. Officially, the NCAA allows students to spend a maximum of 20 hours per week on practice, but many students report spending double that amount of time on the court or in workouts that are voluntary in name only. In 2015, the NCAA conducted a survey of athletes who all admitted that they are spending way more than 20 hours per week on athletics. Division I men's basketball players reported spending 34 hours per week on athletics. FBS football players reported spending 42 hours per week on athletic activities, a full-time job. Two-thirds of Division I and II students said they spend as much or more time on athletics during the off-season as during their competitive season. Because of these long hours, the average Division I men's basketball player missed 2.2 classes per week during the basketball season. 21% of basketball players missed more than three classes per week during the season. The evidence is in. College sports aren't amateur anymore. They're big business. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you wish to comment or learn more, feel free to contact my colleagues or me at www.jamesgmartin.center. Thank you.